we're talking right now about the objections in the last two, three years of modern scholarship to the very thing that he accepted as being true, namely that Jesus did rise from the dead. And one of the objections uh, made a big splash, and it's not heard of too much right now, but the fact it was a big splash of Jesus' family tomb, namely that they found these bone boxes, one of which was Jesus, and the bones uh, supposedly were in that box, which shows there's no resurrection. Talk to that. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. I think you're right. This has died down. And one of the reasons it died down is because so many experts have stepped forward and saying, this doesn't make sense. The evidence does not add up. And consequently, we see it's been kind of deflated in terms of its popular acceptance. Yeah, I agree. You went further. Week after the fact that the thing played, all of the people that were cited Mm -hmm. in the special all denied it except James Tabor. Right. It's very interesting how many people backpedaled and said they were misrepresented or whatever. But I think it's interesting, too, if you look at the book that James Cameron, who was the movie producer of the Titanic, who wrote, uh, co-authored the book about this, uh, his first line in that book says, uh, paraphrasing, I'll tell you what it basically says, uh, more and more scholars are now coming to the conclusion that Jesus never really existed. That right there tells you this guy's out to lunch. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Doesn't know what he's talking about. That is demonstrably false. That is just a, 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 an incredibly inaccurate summation of the evidence. Only the lunatic fringe uh, has any, you know, believes that Jesus never really existed. But that tells you sort of the responsible level of their scholarship uh, when you get into this thing. It tells you something about their thinking process. The truth is, you know, they found uh, some um, remains in a tomb outside Jerusalem. The two archaeologists who actually made the discovery said they didn't think, they didn't believe. In fact, there's, there's virtually no chance that this is actually Jesus' tomb. So you have the original discoveries of the tombs discounting it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did have a, um, some boxes at ossuaries where they would collect the bones of the dead. They would bury someone, come back later, a year later or so, and uh, collect the bones into a box called an ossuary. And uh, there were names on it. And one of them was Jesus, uh, who was son of Joseph. And then there was, uh, well, and other ones of his family, supposedly similar names. Well, you know, it was one Mary, but one of every four or five women in that time period, Jewish women, was named Mary. Mm -hmm. This is not unusual at all. In fact, there were about a thousand people named Jesus who had a father named Joseph in Jerusalem in that time frame. Uh, And if you even took into account all of the other names on the ossuaries, there's only a one chance in 11 that this would be Jesus' tomb. And that, of course, ignores all of the other evidence to the contrary. I'm just looking at it mathematically, like a 9% chance. Mm -hmm. Uh, Plus the fact there were not just the ossuaries that they talked about on the TV show, I think 9 or 10 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are actually like 30 that were found in there. Mm -hmm. So when you factor those in, it gets more confused. And um, so this is just something that uh, is fading from public consciousness finally because uh, uh, enough people have stepped forward to say, you know what, this doesn't add up. The evidence does not point in that direction. This is not Jesus' tomb. And uh, so I think we're 